First time I met Ian Meadows was in 1968 at Sam River School. He was our English teacher. He walked into the room, introduced himself, told us what he taught, and drew a weightlifter on the board and said, any boys interested after school to come down. Then he proceeded to teach us English. Many people have crossed my path in life, and one of those people that have crossed my path and made a difference in me from that day forth was Ian Meadows. I had just moved to Enfield from Elmsdale, and everybody in the neighborhood said, well, we play sports. And I said, well, I like sports. And they said, well, we're going to go down to the gym and train with Ian Meadows in his basement. I'd never lifted weights, didn't have a clue about what weightlifting was, but I said, well, you know, I want to fit in, new town, might as well go in and see what everybody's doing. So we walked over to his house, and uh, in the basement, in the dark, dingy basement, I thought, oh, man, this is a little creepy. I don't know if this is where I want to be, but there was crashing and banging going on, and I said, this is scary. I don't think this is probably the right thing for me, but then all these kids were down there, everybody was on a platform, lifting barbells, and there was Ian Meadows, big smile on his face, well, welcome, come on in, you know, welcome to the club. So showed me how to lift weights first time, and I was hooked from that point on, you know, from about 11, 12 years old, I, it was the, the thing that I wanted to do. East Hans had a very successful program, but East Hans didn't have a monopoly on, on young guys that had some genetic potential that were strong. Every community in this province and across Canada, every community, every village has families or individuals that have superior genetics for, for this sport. But very, very, very few individuals or, or locations have the success that East Hans did. Because what all those other places don't have is someone like Ian Meadows. Ian had that commitment. He had the knowledge. He had the commitment. That was his life. And that's what made East Hans the successful uh, club or area that it was in, in the sport. My first competition with Ian and the crew from Salmon River School was in 1969 at Sydney Stephen High School. After the competition, he took all seven of us down to, at that time, like a Dairy Queen. I'll never forget, all of us ate for $10. I remember going on weightlifting trips and we'd load his station wagon down. We would have 400 pounds of weights, we'd have platforms, we'd have scales. Um, we'd tack as many weightlifters as we could inside, stick them inside the vehicle. And then I think Velcro was developed and some of the later ones I think we stuck to the roof and then away we'd go. Before we went on any trip, we would do a 360 degree circle. And you know, whichever cars were following us would say, Geez, I guess we have to do this too. So three or four cars would do a ceremonial circle. We'd follow and we'd leave. And you know, it was a couple of years later that I said, geez, I wonder what we were doing. And I realized he must have been doing that to see if the, all four wheels would stay on the car before they fell off so that we'd get away on our trip. So. A true athlete has the talent to be an athlete, but you have to have the devotion and sacrifice, which he incurred into me because you have to train her. One of the most memorable things was he used to call it the sticking point when you used to lift the weights. And uh, of course, being questionable, I said, what is the sticking point? He says that's when a different group, different group of muscles take over. The scientists probably had to do research on that, but Ian Meadows knew that thing right off. He analyzed every every movement, every lift. I mean, there are many lifts you do that aren't a complete lift. You you take a lift and you dissect it maybe into six or eight different exercises that that cumulatively support the the final product. And every one of those those exercises he would analyze and dissect and, and correct slight flaws, slight, uh, you know, your, your angle here is quite wrong, your, your, your alignment isn't quite right, you need uh, another couple inches of dip, you need to do this. Very analytical, very methodical, and uh, just tore the lift apart into its components, strengthened every one of them, made every one of them more technical, and then worked with you to assemble it to the, to the end product. Training with Ian was probably the most exciting or most important thing that we could do. We would look forward to training more than anything else. Uh, we were so psyched. We wanted to be there. We wanted to train. And it wasn't just simply because of the workout. It was because Ian was there. We would be in the gym with him, and he'd crack a little pun or a joke. He introduced us to humor. As most people may know, he was an English teacher at the time, so there was always a little bit of something funny coming from Ian, and he was a master of the pun. I called him the, the pundit of pungence. So he would uh, say something, and then the next person in the room would say something funny. And we'd go 15, 20 minutes around the room with somebody telling a joke. And, you know, everybody would be on the floor laughing. So 
Getting to the gym to train was as much about the experience of being with him and the other lifters, having a good time, as it was about the training. Ian, although the club was based at the school, every bit of that gear belonged to Ian. He bought it with his own personal money. He would take trips to the States to buy equipment and bring it in. Uh, Ian made a contribution through his, his time, his, his energy, his knowledge financially. Uh, Ian was the program. There's, there, was no, uh, there was no one else waiting in the wings. There was no support team. There was no, there was no team manager or, or assistant coach. Ian was the program. Ian uh, is the face of weightlifting in Nova Scotia, but it's because he's incorporated all the roles of weightlifting into one person. It's, it's difficult to be a coach and to be a mentor, to be a chauffeur, to be an MC, to be the provincial director, and to be able to build the platforms and run a competition all at the same time. You usually need about 10 people to fill his shoes. Because of his involvement with weightlifting Ian's, is that he's created many a young man and even weight, girl weightlifters into making them into the individuals who they are today. You knew that you wanted to be the best that you could be. You knew there were only 24 hours in a day and you had some academic things to do. You had your school, you had sports and, and many sports. Many lifters were involved in three or four different sports at the same time. So you learned how to focus and by training with Ian, his routines were set up in such a way that you know, if you had an hour to train, this is what you had to accomplish in that hour to the best of your ability. And I think that carries over to many of the things that you do later on in life, uh, whether it's academics and, or the way you raise your kids and how you, how you treat them in their sports. You know, what rubs off goes a long way in how you, how you deal with the future. If it wasn't for Ian Meadows, I would not be who I am and what I am today. Before he introduced me to weightlifting, I was actually a tap dancer but I don't think I would have uh, prospered from my tap dancing lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Ian is an amazing guy. Uh, you know, he, he's an inspiration. I think inspirational would be a word that I would use to, to describe everything that he does. Uh, he's a uh, character and uh, we need characters in sport. That's what brings us to it. If I had to say something about Ian, that, that's probably one of the more important things that he's done as a coach, is he fostered in his athletes a love for the sport. And for people to actually succeed and do well in any sport, and I think the best coaches do that, their, their athletes love the sport to the point where they would do that above anything else. And I think all of Ian's lifters, if you ask them today, 20, 30, 40 years later, would you go back to train if your body would allow it? Every single one would. No matter where they were in their life doing whatever, if they could go back and train with Ian, every single person would do it. So he's an inspiration. I guess the, the definition or the term legend, he would fall into that category. Because, like I said previous, he's changed a lot of young people's lives by introducing them. Not from the lifting point of view, but I mean from the uh, discipline and respect for your, you know, people's skills and, and things like that. So if one was to determine as a legend, he would be a legend in that way. But again, being a humble man that he is, he doesn't like the limelight. So, and uh, thanks Uncle Ian. And he likes to be called Uncle Ian. I mean, I've been involved in other activities where there's always a little clique or a group or individuals who maybe don't, uh, don't, don't like the coach or whatever, but they're there because they want to be there or whatever, but everyone wanted to be there, everyone loved Ian, uh, Ian was respected, he was respected for the guy he was, respected for the, the commitment he made, the contribution, uh, respected for his knowledge. Uh, Ian, when, when you traveled with Ian to a weightlifting meet, everyone knew Ian, uh, you could go coast to coast. Everyone knew Ian, everyone respected Ian. Ian was a, you know, just a, everyone loved Ian. There is no greater feeling than the feeling of being strong, both physically and mentally. I have incurred that since being introduced to weightlifting, and I still live by those standards today. 2015 East Hans Sport Hall of Fame inductee, Ian Meadows.